Hi everyone, my name is Pam Park. And I'm Betty Jones. We're doing another episode of Deliverance is Real. You know, Betty, we know deliverance is real. Yes, it is. Deliverance is real. And I actually think deliverance should be a lifestyle. I believe that too. But one of the topics we want to talk about today, how do you know you need deliverance? Other than growling. Other than growling and howling at the moon or foaming at the <laughs> mouth. I mean, come on. <laughs> but we want to talk a little bit about this. And I'm just going to put some things out there. And Betty, you just kind of highlight yeah. on that. But one of the things I had put down is intrusive thoughts. The enemy is always trying to contradict who we are. What do you think about that, intrusive thoughts? Yeah, thoughts that are not your thoughts. <clears throat> they feel like your thoughts. They kind of sound like your voice, but it's intrusive. I mean, it's like you're driving down the highway. Well, hit that tree. Why don't you just run off the bridge? Why don't you just, I mean, just intrusive, out of the blue thoughts that you know are not yours. Right. Even like perverted thoughts, evil thoughts that, you know, all of a sudden you want to hurt somebody and the thoughts just keep coming and coming and perverted thoughts. I would say that's probably the number one way you know that you might need deliverance. Yes. So as we go down some of this list here, you know, I, I, we want everybody to be free. So did Jesus. And, you know, Jesus did say, Betty, that deliverance is a miracle. And I believe we're in the miracle work and business because we do deliverance all day, almost every day on people. Well, you know, when deliverance is removing oppression. Yes. And so, you know, demons bring oppression and they're going to hit your mind. Yes. And you know, it's funny you said that because I wrote this down. The battle is in the mind. Whoever has control over the mind has control over the physical realm. So what is the enemy after? He is after our mind. Yes, he is. And when we go to sleep at night and you start having nightmares, I had a lady at one of the meetings just the other day came up and she said, I have nightmares every single night. And I guess she was maybe 20. And I said, every single night, she said, every single night I have nightmares. Something is trying to hurt me. Something's chasing me. Something's always trying to harm me. And I said, that is a visitation of a demon in your sleep. Right. Because when we sleep, they can attack our mind. Right. And you know, if the enemy can get a hold of our mind, he can get a hold of our life. Yeah. And that's the way he starts. The goal of the enemy is to make us mentally weak. He wants our mind weak. You know, even when he tempted Jesus in the desert, Betty, uh, he tried to, to actually tempt him in his mind. Yeah, he did. He was hungry. Mm -hmm. He was weak. Oh, if you're hungry, you could just get some bread. So he tempted Jesus to actually get his mind to obey the temptations that he was throwing out there in his weakest moment. Well, you know, I have this written down. Demons will hold on to anything in your life that they can to remain. That's right. You know, he he's so methodical. And I'm telling you, the battle is in the mind. The goal of Satan is to make us mentally weak. That's what he wants us to begin to believe the lies, the attack of the mind, the strongholds, always imagining the worst case scenario. That's true. And the vain imaginations have to be dealt with. You cannot ignore them. Right. It may come as just a, a little thought that's not a dangerous one. Right. But that thing will grow to a dangerous thought. Right. Of self-harm. Uh, you know... You know, cutting is real big right now. Yeah. We deal with it all the time of young kids cutting themselves. Right. And those that is a thought of self-harm, self-hatred. Everything starts with a thought. If he can get our mind, because we are a three-part being, mm -hmm. a spirit, soul, and body, and our soul is our mind, our will, and emotions. And if he can get our mind... He'll have our will, and then he'll have our emotions. And then we act out what we've been thinking. You know, when when you do have a thought that is intrusive, and it's not your thought, 
And what do we do then? Pam, what do you think is the best thing to do when a thought zings past your mind, just out of the blue, wicked, evil, or negative thought? What is the first thing you do? Well, the word says to take every thought captive. And, you know, I mean, you'll have a thought, you're going to die. Uh, and then you have to immediately grab a hold of that thought out loud, say, Oh, no, I won't. I will live and not die and declare the works of the Lord. So we grab those thoughts. We pull those thoughts down. We don't entertain the thoughts. You know, God told Joshua, every place the sole of your feet, your foot treads. So when you're taken captive that thought, you are treading on that thought. Right. You are saying, no, that is not my thought. Right. So we have to separate. That is not my thought. In the name of Jesus, Jesus, I speak to that thought and I say, you be quiet. That's right. So you take authority over that thought. And you know, Betty, number two, how do you know you need deliverance? Paranormal things happening around you, yeah. in your house, just things that begin to happen. What, what do you Paranormal think? Paranormal things like you're talking about drawers opening, doors opening, orb lights floating around. You think you see something scurrying across the, yeah. the rug. Okay. P something laying on you at night. Yeah, uh, yeah. explain that because that's really big right now. We deal with it a lot. It's really big right now because... Uh, we hear so much every day about people that they feel like something's laying on top of them. Um, they have sexual dreams yeah. where they're actually being attacked sexually in their dreams. Um, the big thing is sleep paralysis. And as we say, that is a demonic visitation. Yes, it is. You know, and, and I wrote this down. Demons... Uh, have supernatural ability, but so do we. Mm -hmm. And they want you to sin for hours when you have these, the, the, you're being attacked by these demons. You know, and I wrote this down. We can fall asleep really fast reading our Bible, but we can stay up for hours playing video games, watching pornography, being on Facebook, all these things we can do for hours, but the minute you start reading yeah. your Bible, it's like, I'm sleepier than I've ever been. Have you yeah. ever encountered that, yeah. Betty? Well, yeah, because the, the Word is alive, and those demons hope, and you never get the Word in you. Yeah, you can be in the Word, but the Word better be in you. That's right. It's not about just reading the Word every day and how many chapters. That This right here has to get in us. us. Because how did Jesus confront Satan in the wilderness? It, it is, is written, written. It is written. written. The third time, God said. And so we better know how to say, God said, no, that is not my thought. Yeah. You lose your hold on my mind right now. And Betty, he was at his weakest moment, 40 days of no food, out there by himself, lonely. I mean, and the enemy came at the right time but Jesus stood his ground. Man does not live by bread alone, but every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. And uh, the number three thing, before we close on this part, uh, you've tried everything. You've read scriptures. Uh, you've done everything you know to do. Why would you think then, Betty, why not try casting out a demon. You were just telling me a story of somebody mm -hmm. that was telling you some things going on in their life. And you said, you have a demon. And they said, really? Yeah. It was just a man that came to me and he was battling this. And he said, I've done everything. I have tried this and I have tried that. And I've tried this. He said, I don't want to live this way anymore. And I don't know what to do. And somebody said, why don't you call and make a session? So he made an appointment immediately it didn't take five minutes talking to him mm -hmm. and you realize this was a dark entity a disembodied spirit and you know demons have to have a door to come through and that can be an ancestral door and I said sir I believe what happened to you when you were eight years old that was the door that this spirit came mm -hmm. into you and he had a legal right. And but before we close on this segment, Betty, I want to say this. Even uh, just a call the other day 
about a, a three-year-old mm -hmm. that was having nightmares, night after night, and and fits of rage, and uh, through a word of knowledge, tell everybody what happened. I'm not sure I'm remembering that what what story that was. That was uh, uh, that little girl. You know, like, uh, well, I'm just gonna I'm say sorry. your granddaughter. Oh, okay, <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. And and a, through a word of knowledge, I asked my granddaughter. It was my great granddaughter. Yes. And she was asking me because she was having night terrors every night, and I had a word of knowledge. I saw this thing in my mind, and I said, "Do you have?" I said, "Are there unicorns in the room?" Because I saw a unicorn, mm -hmm. and I she went probably 50 and slept with one and slept with one it was a big unicorn and i said sweetheart i want you to go in the room and cleanse that room get all the unicorns out and any demonic we think a unicorn is just innocent they are not yeah it's witchcraft oriented and so that just happened just a couple of weeks ago yeah. in my family and and so they gathered it all up and uh, she's sleeping much, much, much better, much more relaxed and not waking up just terrified. So demons can attach to an object. Right. So go in your kid's room and see, where's the open door? What is it? What right. could it be? And the Holy Ghost will show you. I mean, I was just sitting there having coffee that morning. Right. And But you know, even children can go through deliverance, mm -hmm. Betty. In a, in a, we do it in a different kind of way. But why do we need to wait till we're 20, 30, 40 years old if we see our children being attacked at a young age? The Holy Spirit lives in us. Let those words of knowledge come forth. God, what is this? And boom, and you can break the power of the enemy at a very young age. You know, one of the things I tell people, we must learn to release spiritual authority and spiritual power. We have it. Right. Because the Lord gave it to us, but we have to learn to release it. And I said, we can release in the name of Jesus spiritual authority over the enemy because he is defeated. He is. And, you know, so there's so much to deliverance and we're just so excited to be a part of what God's doing in these last days because deliverance seems to be coming to the forefront oh, it in is. all over, you know, YouTube and TikTok with these these men and women of God. Uh, we were doing it before it was even popular, Betty. Yeah, we were. <laughs> I mean, we were doing yeah. it long before then. And so we're just so excited. But I just want to kind of end with this. I had written this down. We are not an audi audience, but we are an army, Betty. And we need to make a decision right now. I made my decision. I am not living bound. Right. I'm Years gonna be ago, free. I'm going to be free. And I had to go through deliverance. I needed deliverance. You know, spirit of murder was one of the first demons that came out of me. And I wasn't living like that. I wasn't living in that violent rage, spinning, uh, didn't know why I reacted the way I reacted. Right. I set my will. I repented. And I came against the enemy. And, and that's called deliverance. And you know, Betty, there's nothing that any one of us as a believer has done that we cannot strip away the legal right of the enemy because Jesus died yeah. to give us that right to go into the enemy's camp and take back what he's stolen from us. Well, once we remove the permission and close the door, then we can deal with that demon. Amen, amen. <laughs> Join us for our next part two on this. It's going to be so exciting. Yes, it will. Bye-bye.